Hello my dear students, I hope you all are keeping well. Once again welcome back to your geography class and in this class I am going to discuss a most interesting topic of geography that is weathering. So what is weathering? That I told you all the geography is that subject where in the name only you can identify some stress of this topic. So here the name of the topic is weathering. So that means here the main or major ingredient is weather and climate. So before starting this chapter, I want to mention you two important forces that generally act below or above the earth's crust. So the force that is generally acting below the earth crust is known as internal force. And this internal force is also known as constructional force. Why? Because while they are acting below the earth crust, automatically they generally create some important landforms on the surface of the earth. So, hence they are known as the constructional force. Now, another one is exogenic force or external force. What is that? Obviously, by this name you can understand this, when the force will act on the surface of the earth, not below the surface, on the surface of the earth, then this will be known as exogenic force. Now, just imagine the elements of weather and climate. What are they? Yes, they are temperature, precipitation, humidity. So, all of these ingredients or all of these elements, they generally act over the earth crust. That means they all are the agents of exogenic forces. Okay, that's what the weathering, this process is also an exogenic process. I hope this point is clear to you all. Now, let's move on to the first point of this topic that is the definition. So, what is the definition of weathering? Weathering is a process of wearing away or breaking down of rocks. So weathering is that kind of process through which process the rocks will be generally disintegrated or broken down but they will not change its place. So removal is not taken place in that weathering cases. So what happened if you see that picture you can easily understand that previously the size of the rock was like this. But after the weathering process, the size it has changed. Again, more weathering when it has occurred on that rock, it has changed its shape. So see the structure and the shape of the rocks, it is changing. Okay, so this is weathering. And here the main point is the disintegrated part or the fragmented materials will not be removed from that place. It will be stay in that particular area that is weathering but when the materials will be moved away from a particular place to another place that will be known as erosion so there is a basic difference between weathering and erosion in weathering removal is not possible or is not taken place but in erosion generally removal or movement of such particle is taken place so i hope the definition is more or less clear now let's move on to the new topic that is the characteristics. So why I discuss the characteristic before going into the topic because if you will not understand the basic characteristics then this topic will be little bit hard for you. So what are the general features or characteristics here? Number one, this process generally involves in disintegration and decomposition of this solid matter. That means rock. Number two, weathering always will take place on the surface of the earth. Done. Now, here I have shown you one diagram. There you can see that how the size and structure of the solid particles is changing. Okay. So, if the process will continue, then what will happen? This small rock, it will be disintegrated and they will form these tiny particles. Okay, because they will be disintegrated in that much that they will produce some fine materials. And when these fine and tiny particles will be mixed up with the 
decayed plant and animal bodies that means with humors then it will create the soil so weathering is the process which is responsible for the formation of soil that is another one characteristics now next is in this process the two important elements are needed what are they number one is climate because here i told you that in the name only it is written weather so climate obviously plays an important role here and what are the elements of climate like temperature rainfall humidity this will act on this process and another important point is the structure or the texture of the rock how the quality of the rock is so that are the ingredients or that are the basic things which generally play an important role in the case of weathering so what did i say here for weathering two important factors are generally responsible number one it is the materials or the elements of climate and number two the structure and texture of the rock next process the weathering it generally does not involve only one process there are several process there for the occurrence of weathering and last but not the least weathering can be caused or can be developed with the help of biotic matter what are the biotic matter the plants the animals the human beings they also play an important role in case of weathering so this is the general information of weathering now we will discuss about the classification or what are the types of weathering that generally take place on the surface of the earth so let's move on to the next topic okay so now we will discuss about the various types of weathering what are they number one it is mechanical weathering or physical weathering number two it is chemical weathering and last but not the least that is biological weathering so how many types of weatherings are there number one mechanical or physical number two chemical and last one is biological now one by one i'll discuss all these three <coughs> methods so number one it is mechanical mechanical means obviously by hearing this word you can easily identify or realize that yes machines will work here but here not machine here the uh, uh, weathering is also known as physical weathering that means when the elements of climate like temperature air pressure air humidity and uh, then precipitation then all will work on a particular rock they will change the physical structure of such rock not the chemical structure okay so the main point over here is mechanical weathering means by this process of weathering the outer part or the outer structure of the rock will be changed not the internal part okay only maybe the size can be changed okay the structure can be changed but the main ingredient will remain same because this physical weathering does not harm the internal elements of the rock it is generally acting over or on the rock that means it can change only the structure or shape of such rock that means the physical condition of the rock now under this there are so many subdivisions okay number one it is block disintegration now this physical or mechanical weathering it is very much prominent in desert type of climatic area in desert type of climate we can generally experience huge amount of temperature in the morning time or at the day time and at night the temperature remains very cool because we know there the range of temperature is very high why so because in desert desert means it is a land of sand okay and by this the sand can absorb the solar heat quickly and that's what it gets heated very quickly that's what at the morning the temperature remains very high but what happened during night time though the sky is completely clear the ray can be easily radiated back to the space that means it remains the land very cool 
So what happened? In the morning, the temperature remains very high and at the night, the temperature remains very cool. So hot and cool, both type of climate or both type of uh, situation this region can experience. Okay. So the rocks that is present in that particular range or that particular area, in morning they get so much heat and at night generally the amount of heat becomes less. So by this what will happen the physical structure of such rock will be changed because repetitive heat and heating and cooling will obviously affect the rock. And after such a point, the rock, when it will just cross the stress level. Now, what is stress level? Suppose you are given pressure continuously, like at a certain point, you will feel very much frustrated and you will feel that now I'll not do that one. That is your stress level. So like this, when a perfect rock, it is getting heat and again it is getting cool so repetitively if this process is going on then what will happen after a certain point the rock will lose its stress level and it will be broken in some pieces this is known as granny uh, sorry block disintegration right and the, generally this is taken place or this can uh, find in the desert type of region now next is granular disintegration. Now granular, granular means in grains. So what will happen if a big structure of rock is there? Okay, and again the same process, heating and cooling is taken place repetitively. What will happen? The rock will be disintegrated or broken down into small, small, tiny particles. Okay, the small, small, tiny particles, then they will be known as granular disintegration then number three it is exfoliation now it is very much interesting exfoliation means what happened just i am giving you one example you if you take a one onion and you are trying to peel off the cover of this then what will happen one by one layer will come out right like this here also when a rock is getting repeated heat in the morning and at night it is getting cooled down then what will happen after a certain point the outer part of the rock will be peeled off layer by layer okay this is known as exfoliation see all where the process are more or less same but what is the basic difference how the particles are getting away how the particles are separating away from the main rock in the first point block means in block way in boulder shape they will be separated second granular means the boulder particle or the rock will be disintegrated in tiny particles or in grains and last number that is exfoliation in exfoliation layer wise it will be separated from the main structure of the rock and last one is frost action frost means the ice in the hilly region what happened inside the cracks because we know there are so many cracks present on the surface of the earth so inside the cracks though generally it is filled up the cracks are generally filled up of some amount of water okay and we know that hilly region means during night the temperature becomes very less and the water it transforms into solid from solid to sorry from liquid to solid state because water itself is a liquid state but after getting so much less temperature it will be transformed into solid particles like from water it will be transformed into ice particles and when a liquid is transforming in a solid particle obviously the volume becomes increased okay so here also the volume will be increased now if i'll draw one picture then it will be easy to understand now just this is the rocks or this is the mountain region so these are the cracks and it is filled with water after getting very less amount of temperature this water will be transformed into ice and we know the volume of a solid is much more than the volume of liquid so what will happen the volume means here the ice will give the pressure to the sides of the rocks and like this here the rocks will be disintegrated that action is known as frost action so these are the basic 
processes or basic methods of mechanical or physical weathering. I hope this one is more or less clear to you all. In our next class, we are going to discuss about the chemical and biological weathering and the basic difference between mechanical and chemical weathering. Till then, take care. Thank you.